conclusion inevitable. It was a jump to conclusions, Matt. My conclusion was that this idea was not a practical deterrent. My only conclusion can be that it was a Sith Lord. In conclusion. Hello there, folks. Welcome back to In Conclusion, the only movie podcast that's every comic book nerd's dream to be the villain to someone else's hero. Uh-oh. Spoiler alert. I'm the bad guy. I'm Dan O'Keefe. And joining me is my direct opposite. Both of our weakness... We burn in the sun. Anna Correct. Otto, how are you, Anna? I'm good, Dan. That was quite the entrance. I uh, I do appreciate that you assigned me as a hero since I love that Bruce Willis's color in this movie is green. Mm-hmm. It's my favorite color. And I hate purple, so it's even better. Perfect. Perfect. Um, so how are you? Good. Tired. Not anything exciting going on in my life. I had my... uh. My dental implant fixed this morning. Ooh. Ooh, So exciting. Somebody call the press. I know. Stop the presses, more like. More like stop the... No, stop the chewing. That doesn't work. I mean, pretty much. I was only allowed... I wasn't allowed to eat anything sticky today, so, you know, really exciting stuff on my end. (laughs) No gum. No candy. Torture. No joy. Absolute torture. Mm. Those are my two food groups. Gum and candy. They're separate. Yep. yep. <laughs> uh, so, um, the movie that we're talking about today. Yeah, let's dive right in. <laughs> let's do it. There's nothing else to talk about. Remember when uh, you asked me if I was ready to start recording? I think I lied. <laughs> yeah, I asked three minutes ago. Are you ready to my start bad. recording? And you're like, yep. Yeah, and then I forgot everything I ever had to say in my life. Anyway. Well, there's no going back. I did the intro once and I'm never doing it again. That's fine. (laughs) Until next week. Uh, The movie that we're talking about today is Unbreakable. Not to be confused with the Unbreakable Kimmy Kimmy Schmidt. Ooh, I almost just said something else. Unbreakable Kimmy shit, bitch. Yep, that's Um, the one. (laughs) Also not to be confused with what I was going to make the intro about. Unbroken. The What's novel that? by Laura Hildebrand, and then the movie directed by Angelina Jolie, but the guy who survives uh, a Japanese POW camp and getting tortured in there. Oh, I did not even know that was a thing. I would oh, never heard of that. It's about Louis Zamperniti. Hmm. That's the real well, life guy. He passed away in sounds... 2018, I think. Oh. Well, rest in peace. Um, that sounds very interesting. I- <laughs> <laughs> it sounds very interesting. I might have to give that a list or a, a watch. Give it a That's listen. With, give it a, give listen. a listen. Listen to uh-huh. it. Don't watch. Close my eyes the whole time. I'm. I've got it on the screen. Well, also, I think you'll like it because the the guy in it is uh, he's very handsome. The main guy. Is Ooh, I'm always Jack interested. O'Connell. Jack Could, O'Connell. Mm. Yeah. Who I don't, I haven't seen anything else that he's in. Maybe he said I worked with Angelina Jolie. That Daniel, he's not even cute. You made me look at this man with my own two eyes. I thought he was handsome. Oh, here, that's just a really bad picture of him. Yes, he yeah. is handsome. I'm sorry for what I said. How dare you? He's Apologize. handsome. But the... He's I'm our sorry, patron. Sorry, Mr. O'Connell. I'm sorry, Jack. Uh, it's just because the first picture of him that pops up is. Not, not yeah, great. he has terrible honestly, hair in it. Honestly, if you gave me a goog too, I'm pretty sure it would be the exact same situation. And <laughs> you know, so anyway. anyway. Oh, Ooh. I just googled myself. I own a pizza restaurant. Where is it? Hello. Oh, it's in Spain. Oh. Okay. Well, I shot my shot. <laughs> I just Googled myself. I invented Festivus. You said that last time. That's so fun. I know. Uh, anyway, have to unbreakable. Fly all the way to Bogota. Okay, sorry. This is the silence that you only get on this podcast. Yep. <laughs> um, 
Unbreakable, directed and written by M. Night Shyamalan, starring Bruce Willis, Samuel L. Jackson, Robin Wright Penn, as she was called then because she was married to Sean Penn. Who? <laughs> May I just say? Um, edited by Dylan Titchener, with music by James Newton Howard. Released on November 21st, 2000, with a budget of $75 million, it made $248.1 million. On Rotten Tomatoes, it is a 70% approval rating, with the critical consensus reading, with a weaker ending, Unbreakable is not as good as The Sixth Sense. However, it's quietly suspenseful that intrigues and engages, taking the audience through unpredictable twists and turns along the way. And Big Raj, Roger Ebert, gave it three out of four. I, I'm just going to say it. I really like this movie. I had only seen it for the first time this past winter. Wow. Yeah. And I really like it. Looks like we're going to embrace debate. No, I Dan. thought this movie was so boring. Uh, you know that I want you to know that Gage referred to you as his ultimate foe the other day. <laughs> And I was like, why? He's like, I hate Dan. I was like, literally, why? What's wrong? And he's like, he just doesn't agree with me on movies. And I was like, actually, I'm not going to lie, Dan. He did refer to you as having no taste. <laughs> Sir! Oh, well, you're going to have to come over here and do duke it out fisticuff style on your own time. I am not getting in the middle of it. I will never claim to have taste. But I also, I can't say that I have no taste. You have I some recognize taste. when things are good and bad. I recognize that I have usually bad taste, so I'm not getting involved. As we learned from my book experience this morning, <laughs> where I found out one of my favorite books was, quote unquote, insidiously problematic, according to a user on Goodreads. <laughs> <laughs> it's a book about sharks. You know, the most problematic animal. And it's not Jaws, which is problematic in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I watched this this afternoon. Mm -hmm. I watched it with the perfect weather to watch yeah. it against because it was raining and gloomy here all day. Yes. Um, I didn't. I don't get it. I don't understand the hype. I didn't. I didn't think there was a twist at the end. I saw that coming from a thousand miles away. Nobody can see this, but I'm rolling my eyes so hard that my head is rolling with it. I just want to let everybody know. And whether or not the, the twist is the point doesn't matter. I have felt nothing for any of these characters. The most interesting nothing? part of the movie was when the kid was going to shoot his parents. Because I was like, finally, oh. something's going to happen. That part always has me gripping, gripping my seat, you know, my clutching my pearls. Like, I... I <laughs> What, what what's good about this? I don't know. I just like it. I I think it, I I like it. I think it's kind of a fun little adventure, you know. Like everybody always talks about what superpowers they'd have if they could have a superpower. Don't you think it would be funny if like your superpower was thick bones? I wish. <laughs> yeah, you know, like wouldn't that be kind of cool? He doesn't get sick either. I would love that superpower. Can you imagine? I said to Gage, I said, can you imagine breezing through coronavirus if you were unbreakable? You never got sick? Yeah, having no Bleh! worries about it? Yeah, I'd be like, the store? I'm on my way. I'm licking the displays. Screw it. Do you think, okay, gross question of the day. Mm -hmm. Do you think that if you found out that you could never get sick, your your hygiene would decline? <laughs> No, the only thing that would probably decline is how often I wash my hands, which is already yeah. not often enough. Daniel, I think that's a man thing. I'm not trying to group all men in, but I heard that a lot of men don't wash their hands after they go to the bathroom. Can you confirm? Not every time. I only wash it if there's a need for it. Like if there's splashback or something. Oh. I will, I, okay. Depending on what number it is. Okay, fair. Yeah. Anyway, I was just curious. Sorry that everybody had to endure that with us. It's like you when know, you go I to the doctor and, and, and the doctor asks questions while your parents are still in the room. And you're oh, like, oh, and then they leave and ask you the same questions. Mm -hmm. Oh, right Ugh. now. Man to man, 12-year-old yeah. Dan. Tell me the truth. You boinking or not? 
<laughs> As a 12-year-old, I'm like, what's that? I know, but they have to ask it. I had to tell him, I remember, this is not something to joke about. However, last time I went to the doctor was when I still worked at the doggy daycare and my legs were so bruised up, I prefaced by saying, like, I am not, nor have I ever been in an abusive relationship. I work with dogs. That's why I look like I've been in several street fights. <laughs> and they were like, oh, that's good to know. Thank you. I was like, yeah, you're welcome. Because they're jotting I, down I know. Notes. Yeah, they're like liar. obviously lying. Yep. She's a liar. She came out immediately with the dog story and was sweating the whole time. Ma'am, please. It's because I'm afraid of the doctor. <laughs> uh, but, like, back to the movie. Yes. And throughout the movie, okay, specifically the last moments where it does mm -hmm. the flashing at the end, like it's the end of a sports movie. No, it's supposed to be like a comic book. Like, it's the different frames. No, not that. When it's doing, like, the Jake went on to Harvard oh, and became a law yeah. scholar. Yeah, oh that is a little God. bit cheesy. The, I, I guffawed. Okay, I physically okay. guffawed. I think that's very 2000. I think that's a very 2000 way to end a movie. I also know that uh, the original... Like, the original plan for this movie was to do all three of them as one big movie. Yeah. And I feel like they probably, in editing those scripts, probably had to cut out a lot of things that were explained. And that's why they had to do that. I don't want to say cop out, but cop out of doing the, like, Joseph went on to be the star of his football team. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, and I mean, it kind of is a sports movie. There's football. There's football. <laughs> There's. It's a sports a movie in the. It's a sports movie in a way the Social Network is a rowing movie. They go to. That's a sports movie. The confirmed. Social Network is actually way more of a sports movie than this listen, is a football movie. Listen, if we're going off of rating this the way you have that, shifted in your chair, I yes, need to I let did. Everybody know that. I want everyone to know that I have ancient chairs, and so like breathing on them too hard makes them crack as though they have every bone in their body needing to be fixed by a chiropractor. Oh, Mr. Glass. Oh, what can I say? Um, no, but like, it's definitely a sports movie if we look at it through a lens with which people look at like, Gremlins as a Christmas movie, which is something I say, so. It's not, though. We never see any, the only sporting we see is the adult man playing with the children in the field. Yeah, which is weird. I know that that's somebody's <laughs> brother or cousin or whatever, but it, it felt weird to me. <laughs> Maybe I don't understand sports. I think it was weird because it was one. If it was two people, it would have yeah. made more sense. And I guess, like, I can't remember if they said it was his brother or not. That's I the think thing. they said like, it, was guess... one, it was one of the guy's cousins, who yeah. was the, the football star that the agent <sighs> on the train had talked about. I guess I get it. Again, I don't know because I don't do sports. I do theater, and it's not like I'd walk up to a bunch of children and be like, let's perform a scene from Tartuffe. <laughs> Were you, so you weren't one of the people in high school who was like, theater's a sport. No, because I did cross country. Okay, good. Yeah. I was like, theater's a lot of work, but. Theater's a lot I don't of sitting really around. Exercise. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like, how much of that time is me sitting and gossiping with my friends and being told by the director that I'm being too loud? <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. Um, so, the movie, it starts out, and guess what? A baby's what? been born. Yes, as all babies are. <laughs> In West Philadelphia. I know, I screamed. <laughs> Why did they choose West Philadelphia? Dear M. Night Shyamalan... Were you watching Fresh Prince before writing this script? Why couldn't it be not West Philadelphia? I looked it up. It's because he's from West Philadelphia. He's from a suburb just outside of West Philadelphia. M. Night Shyamalan is? Yeah. Oh, I wasn't sure if it was um, Samuel L. Jackson, considering, you know, every time he plays a character, he gets to choose what their color theme is since <laughs> his favorite true. color is purple. I wasn't sure it, if it was like that. It's his favorite city, Philadelphia. <laughs> He's a really big Fresh Prince fan. <laughs> well, I didn't know M. Night Shyamalan was from Philadelphia. Learned something yeah. new. I learned that while doing the research for this episode. Mm. I may be without taste, but I'm not without doing research five minutes before we start recording. 
You could have just said without knowledge, Dan. <laughs> I'm also not very concise. Well, that's okay. Uh, something's weird about this baby, though. It's got, it's got broken bones. Yeah, I mean, the doctor coming in. Did you drop this baby? And the yeah. woman's like, "Dude, <laughs> the no. actual accusations that you're just flinging at me right now." Uh, that baby is, of course, Samuel L. Jackson. We don't see it in person, but I assume they did swaddle Samuel L. Jackson for the scene. And all those actors are yes. huge. Yes, that is correct. Um, and they've and that baby has broken arms and legs. Gasp. It made me think of that line in Spongebob, which probably looking back is drawn from this movie or something. That's like, my bones are made of glass and my skin of ma- is made of paper. Every yeah. morning I break <laughs> my legs and every night I... Like that scene. <laughs> uh, so then we uh, flash forward to modern times and we see Bruce Willis on a train trying to hook up with a far younger woman. Well, he's married, and he takes off his wedding ring. Tisk, 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 tisk. Maybe that's why I didn't like this movie because I hate infidelity. Oh, Gage hates infidelity too. Oh, I, that makes it sound like I don't have an opinion <laughs> about infidelity. I also find it uh, morally wrong. I love um, infidelity. You know, I'm a big fan of cheating on my significant <laughs> other. Uh, no, like Gage, you know, usually he gets really upset when. I mean, in movies, I'm like, oh, they shouldn't do that. But it's, like, not going to break or make the movie for me. Um, mm-hmm. But Gage usually gets really upset about infidelity, too. But he doesn't seem to be. He just goes, oh, Bruce. Like, <laughs> Maybe it's because nothing is consummated with it. And the woman turns him down. I don't know. I think that's for the best. I mean, he yeah. needs to be put in his place, slipping off that ring. You can see the tan line, I'm sure. Probably. You know what I don't understand? What? Those people that have rubber wedding bands to like I knew work before out you, Before you even said that, I knew that's what you were going to say. My boss at work wears rubber wedding rings, but uh, she's really into volleyball. Okay, that makes sense. Just don't wear your ring while playing volleyball. I kind of think that when I get married, I might get myself a rubber ring for like when I go to shows and stuff, because I don't want to lose it. Okay. I don't know. Gage's uh, brother also you know, had... You know, there's one way to fix that. Just don't bring it with you. But what Just if... take it off at home. I, I don't know. What if I want to flex on the haters that I'm married, you know? <laughs> what if I'm like, ooh, somebody chose to date me. It was their first mistake. Not only that, they chose to permanently date me. For what? I don't know. <laughs> I trapped someone. No, I don't know. Like, I think I, I'm on the fence. Like, I don't like the ones that look like they have ring diamonds in them. Mm-hmm. Like, there's some that have like a rubber princess cushion, whatever cut diamond. And I'm like, <laughs> that's kind of ugly. No offense. But um, actually, you know what? Full offense. Yeah. <laughs> Take, um, it. Take it. Sit there. But like, the plain ones are kind of cute. I just, I if you need to be wearing... A wedding band. Uh Uh-huh. At all times. And you can't take it off for, like, physical activity or anything where it would not be logical to wear a wedding ring. I think there's an issue with your marriage. I think somebody told me that the reason they were originally created was so, like, tradespeople, like, specifically electricians and people who work with, like, potentially conducting equipment mm-hmm. could wear them and it, their rings wouldn't conduct. But my dad and just like sense. only wears his wedding ring to formal events. <laughs> so I don't yeah, know. Right. <laughs> yeah. And like he and my mom know they're married to each other. <laughs> yeah. I assume they love each other. They've been together for X yeah. amount of years. At the very bare minimum, they're like roommates. So <laughs> 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 I have this joke with my parents that my mom hates um, where I always accuse her of me being a mistake or an accident. <laughs> and she gets so <laughs> upset. And one time my mom was like, tell your father what you said. And I told him and we were driving past a church and he goes, oh, that's nice. Oh, look, a sign for Jesus. <laughs> it was he is not. Yeah. Anyway, that's one of my favorites. But yeah, no, I guess like. 
like if my dad was younger, he maybe he'd be interested in it. But again, like I said, he just only wears his ring when he's attending a formal event or like church. So. I, I and just, I don't I, think my grandpa's worn a wedding ring since. since I don't think now. either of my grandparents have ever worn a wedding ring since I've been alive. Again, except for maybe to formal events. Yeah. They're still together. They yeah tolerate each other enough. They're thriving. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so if you have a, a rubber wedding band, rethink your life choices. Explain yourself. <laughs> But also tell me if I would like one, you know, for the future. This episode of In Conclusion is brought to you by judgment from people who don't have the same life experiences as you. <laughs> judgment from unmarried people yeah. about the choices of married people. <laughs> judgment. It comes from all sides. Mm -hmm. uh, so this train, Bruce Willis is hitting on this sports agent. Um, she's married. It gets uncomfortable. He's slimy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I literally would never sit next to a man on a train or in a public place unless it was I had to. Or Do maybe I, if he seemed like safely gay. You know? People have told me that I seem safely gay and I guess I take that as a compliment. Well, like one time I was on a train and a guy came up to me and he's like, can I sit here? And I said, yeah. And I, I'm not going to lie. It's because I got big gay vibes from him and i was like he's not gonna be weird and he mm -hmm. wasn't he complimented me on my makeup and we had a really good ride together nice so mm -hmm. i will just say to anybody who would be afraid of me sitting next to them or sitting next to me on a train on a plane or whatever i will not acknowledge your existence once you sit down honestly that's that's the best case scenario i will be reading my book or i will be looking out the window imagining mario is running next to the train uh and so you, me. you will not exist to me once you sit down. I will give do the pleasantries. Is somebody sitting here? No, go ahead. Blah, blah, blah. And then I am in my own world, and you are not in it. If you see me sitting on a train, don't bother me. <laughs> <laughs> don't come anywhere near me. I get motion sickness. We don't know when I'm going to need to get up and run. So, <laughs> If you see it on a train, switch cars. It's only yeah, going for downhill from there. Clear it um, out. Clear it out. Speaking of going downhill, the train starts speeding up uncontrollably and then crashes. Da -da. Very sad. Everyone dies, except... Except for John McClane. Bruce Willis. That's his character in Die Hard. I was say, isn't his name David Dunn in this movie? Yeah, isn't David Dunn the name of somebody else? I don't think so. It's supposed to be like a play on like like Clark Kent and Bruce Banner and all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, David Dunn doesn't seem like a very uncommon name. I'm sure there are real people with that name. There was a governor of Maine for three days in 1844 named David Dunn. What a good, like, term, <laughs> honestly. Um, there was a guy on season two of The Voice named mm. David Dunn, who is now a contemporary Christian artist. I feel like that's usually how it goes when right. you're on one of those shows. The ambassador to Togo from 2005 to 2008, David Dunn. Mm. See, it's a common name. Bob Sledder. Jamaican Bob Sledder? Uh, American Bob Sledder. Oh, then I'm not interested. Okay, just because we're not talking about cool runnings this week doesn't mean Humph. that you can't be interested in other Humph. Bob Sledders. Humph, I say. Uh, anyway... Bruce Willis is fine. He survives the train crash. No harm, no foul. His bones are thick. Yeah, they are. Double Qs. <laughs> um, he, he had all the milk he needed when he was growing up. Yeah, and then... More at, milk than Dan. At a, nobody had more milk than me. I am the milk queen king. The milk man? Hide your wives. The milkman's coming. <laughs> Ew! You could, Dan, it's too late. You could have been the mascot for the the Milwaukee milkman or whatever, the Franklin milkman. I need to take my sock off right now and show you what I'm wearing. If it's a milkman sock, I'm going to be very upset. You know my parents go to those games, like, all the time? That, uh, th this was a gift from Anna's parents. Ugh. Anna's mom got me this sock. I'm wearing milkman socks. It's so funny. I love that. I heard that those games are really fun. So, just probably. So you know. Yeah. I want to go to the Kenosha crab legs or whatever they're called. 
crab kings king crabs uh the k- king kingfish yes it's Nosha kingfish anyway at the funeral <laughs> bruce willis sees a note on his uh windshield written in comic sans that says how many days of your life have you been <laughs> it was sick not written in comic sans but it's it was. pretty much written in comic sans no it actually was written in comic sans i don't believe you look it up go rewatch the movie i will i'm a hundred percent certain it is comic sans um okay that's confident dan uh and then Bruce Willis, he asks his boss if anybody remembers him being sick. No, nothing. And then he goes with his son. The boss also is like, fine, you can have a raise. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> obviously that's what you're asking. I'm like, that's kind of smart, though, being like, right? I've never been sick. Give me that raise. Give me that extra $40 a week, baby. Better than nothing. Better that's than true. a sharp stick in the eye. That's a whole tank of gas, you know. Are you 194? I might be. I've I've never heard somebody alive past 1960 say that's better than a sharp stick in the eye. I say that all the time, Dan. <laughs> Literally all the time in serious conversation. People at work will be like, oh, well, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, better than a sharp stick in the eye because I am, you know, my father's daughter. So I'm doing a poll starting now. When I say the word park, the that noun big Mac park. truck right in that little garage. Okay, no, not the verb. The noun park. What is oh. it? The noun park. It's a large, grassy, sometimes it has trees area. Okay, cool. Thank you. That's all I needed. You didn't uh, like my No, you're right. Listening. Your response is correct. The reason I'm doing this poll is because Anna Horst, other Anna, she calls parking spots parks. And she's like, it's a Wisconsin thing. So I'm asking the most Wisconsin Wisconsin person that I know, aside from her mom. Thank you. That's an honor. You're welcome. But But you have confirmed my suspicion that it's not a Wisconsin thing. It's a Anna Horst thing. That's a Horst family thing. Yeah. Uh, So Bruce Willis goes and he meets with Samuel L. Jackson at his store, where Samuel L. Jackson's like, are you a superhero? And Bruce Willis hey, is like, I don't know. It's not a store. It's a beautiful art gallery. It is. And Where's don't some... try and buy some art for your four-year-old named Jeb. I First of all, I was like, Jeb Bush, please clap. <laughs> Second of all, I think my parents bought like some art to hang in my room when I was little. But That's not... a mistake. Well, it was like Walt Disney, like Prince. Okay, so not like... Art not from an like artist. art from an artist that's like that would never so that's why i was like why isn't he just going and buying like a print of this somewhere why isn't else he just going and buying a comic book for a dollar yeah true because what isn't the kid like four yeah he's not gonna know i don't the even difference. know if he'd want a comic book if he can even read that well yet i don't know how four-year-olds are can four-year-olds read i could read it for mm-hmm. i don't remember if i could or not probably maybe i hope the one thing I remember about preschool, like I have one specific memory of getting in trouble because I didn't want to do nap time. I wanted to read instead. Nerd. Yeah. I knew a girl like that when I was in, in grade school. She'd get in trouble for reading all the time instead of uh, doing what she was supposed to. She'd read in the hallways between classes and stuff. I would get in trouble for reading in classes. Like during class, Fair. just ignoring the teacher. That happened through college. Daniel! What? Mostly it was in lectures. That's fair. I did bring knitting once or twice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the worst thing that I did in lectures uh, to not pay attention was play Super Monkey Ball. Dan. And I sat I in like the game. third to last row. And there was just this, like this pocket of people around me who were watching me play Super Monkey Ball. Mm-hmm. One day I brought a controller and was playing it on my laptop with like a PlayStation controller. Dan. Hiding the controller. I got an A in that class. What class is it? Com 1000. Oh, yeah. That makes yeah. sense. All right. Let's get this movie on the road. Why? Dan, we have to talk about it. <laughs> Why? It's um, a movie podcast, Dan. So Samuel Jackson's theory is that if he was born with brittle bones, there has to be somebody born with buff ass bones. With thick and juicy bones. Double cheeked up bones. And he thinks that Bruce Willis is just the man with those thick ass bones. With those sumptuous, thick, juicy, soft, 
<laughs> bones scrum diddly. Bruce Willis is like, interesting. You're crazy, but that's interesting. He says weird flex, but okay. <laughs> Uh, and then he goes back to his job at the stadium um, where, you know, he's a security guard. He's doing security guard things like standing around and just staring at people. Talking into his walkie talkie. Reminds me Wearing of a parking hat. lot days. Oh, yeah. Weren't you a security guard at? Um... I was a, no, I was a parking lot attendant at Northwestern football games. So oh, my God. So what, I could like I could kind there? of exist in this film series. There's a. There's Damn. a version of me in How Philadelphia. How many days have you been sick, Dan? None. None. Never. <gasps> and all that milk you drink, you must be my opposite because I'm weak all the time. But and I've I also don't bone. float. Technically, oh. You've never broken a bone? Well, there's that chance that I might have broken my toe when I stubbed it on Valentine's Day. Um, oh, but we all I don't know that know. story. Do we all know that story? I assume it's nothing more than you stubbed your toe on Valentine's Day and then it hurt for a while. I thought I was going to throw up. I was in so much pain. But oh, yeah. yes, that's <laughs> the long and short of it. Um, well, congratulations on being on the original parts club. Thank no you. It's, no it's pretty chill. Except well, I teeth. do have some replacements. <laughs> yeah, your teeth. Yeah. Never mind. Everything else is in in good working order that we know of, though. Knock on wood again. <laughs> um, I broke my ankle in high school. Both of them, Dan. Don't even lie. No, only one. I just sprained the other one a bunch. Oh, well, Dan, glass ankles, O'Keefe. I don't like that that's my legal middle name. <laughs> <laughs> Take it up with your parents. <laughs> Uh, so at the, the football stadium, he gets a call on his, uh, on his radio and he's like, Hey, somebody's trying to sneak in with a counterfeit ticket. And they say that they know you. And he's like, what? And then this comical looking man in a purple suit and he hair. He like a pimp. He does. Look, and he's got a pimp cane too. It's glass. Yeah. Hey, glass Joe. Um, so he's talking and he's like. Why are you a security guard? Do you think that you were called to this job? Huh? What? Huh? Like the uh, priesthood. He's like, I, I don't know, maybe. And I get, and then he, he's like, I can just get this feeling when there are bad people around. He's like, hmm. Get a feeling. feeling. Huh? What? Mm. Huh? I wonder why. Um, and he kicks a guy out because he thinks he has a gun. Sorry, should I be reacting? Wow. Wow, a gun. Whoa, he thinks. <laughs> and then what a surprise. He's like, okay, game's starting. Go to your seat or leave. I don't care. Um, do you realize how boring this movie is now that I'm describing it? No, I still like it. The things that have happened so far are baby born, okay. man ride train. Man visit Listen, comic book collector. Hot take. I just really like the music. It's, soundtrack's great. The soundtrack slaps. Yeah. And I think it really helps. If there was no music under it, I definitely would be asleep by now. But the music is just, it swells. It's beautiful. And I'm sobbing just because I love instrumentals because I'm a nerd. But I, I like this movie, Dan. Keep talking. <laughs> Keep talking about it. Because my favorite part, when it comes up, I'm going to go off. So, Fine. And guess what? My favorite part's not till When Samuel L. Jackson falls down the stairs. Oh, God. That part's a little bit funny, which is, like, rude of me. But it's, well, like, a little funny. Well, guess what? That's right now. Well, it do be like that, Sam. You shouldn't have been yeah. chasing. And he's hopping down the flight of stairs like a little bunny. Sir, yeah. you're so, literally made of paper and glass. bones glass. and paper skin. <laughs> yeah, Samuel L. Jackson is following the guy that Bruce Willis kicked out of the stadium. And he goes down into man's worst nightmare, the subway station. Gasp. Uh, so, of course, since it's 2000 and the America's, Americans with Disabilities Act had not been fully implemented, nor has mm -hmm. it still been fully implemented, um, hot governmental takes from Dan. Um, 
I mean, he, go on, Dan. He, he hobbles his way down one flight of stairs, but he gets too <laughs> excited and then falls down the rest. It's sad. It's sad. It's supposed to be sad. But it's a little funny just because it like Samuel Jackson is hopping. And it's also the fall is done in first person. It's a little. I mean, the part when the part that really scares me is when his his cane shatters. I'm like, he's gonna fall into that shattered glass and get even more injuries. I thought that would be like where he would actually become Mr. Glass, and it would like fuse with his skin or oh, something. Oh, sorry, Dan. It's not quite that literal. It's just a nickname. I hate metaphors. Sorry. It's According not to even Gage, like a... I probably hate metaphors because I don't have taste. I can't wait to hear what he says <laughs> listening to this episode. <laughs> Um, so now Samuel L. Jackson is in a wheelchair for the rest of the movie. God darn. Um, (laughs) but Bruce Willis is right. The dude did have a gun. He saw it. It was a silver handle, black, something, black grip, something. Yeah. I don't know enough about guns to give a good description, but he had one. He had a gun. He did. Um, I'll call that character Janie. It's a full-on man. Don't care. Okay. (laughs) Um, So we're back at home, and Bruce Willis, he's getting his pump on in the basement. He's like Tim Allen in Home Improvement when he's at the YMCA, but alone in the basement. Stop. I love Home Improvement in case we forgot. Or he's like Tony Soprano when he's working out in the basement. Hey. No. I love the Sopranos. Not enough gabagool. It's I saw a tweet uh, uh, about the Sopranos where they took the lyrics to a Beatles song. Yes, uh, it was they, Eleanor Rigby, yeah, right? Tony yes. Soprano. Something cares for his ducks by the pool. Eats gobbledygool. <laughs> yep, I've seen that one. Um, uh, Don't sigh so what? painfully. I Don't wish you were talking sigh. about the Sopranos. Every episode well, is tough, great, even the bad tough, one. Tough, tough, <clears throat> tough, tough. Anyway, now, if this movie, if this scene was scored differently, it's part of a montage in Shazam. Instead, it's supposed to be a dead serious scene. Not Shazam, please. That's <laughs> the one. The scene where he's lifting weights. Yeah. I know. It's it's cheesy, because then the kid, like, Joseph, I think his name is, right? He, he puts a bunch sure. of, like, paint cans onto the thing, because he... How much weight was that? All of it. And he's like shocked and scared well i would be scared too what if my dad crushed himself but honestly he'd probably live because he's unbreakable damn it what i don't like about this is nobody acknowledges the absurdity of anything that's because superheroes are absurd dan yes We just accept them as something that exists. My issue is not that superheroes are absurd. My issue is that nobody is enjoying the fact that Bruce Willis can now bench press seemingly infinite amounts of weights. Instead, he and his son are, like, scared and, like, almost, like, treating it like it's a divine thing. Like, Bruce Willis' chest is God. Maybe they just are, like, so shocked. Think about it, Dan. Like... If I came over to your house and I was like, look what I could do. Let's try putting more weight on. And we kept adding more and more weight on. Wouldn't you be a little bit freaked out? Like, Anna, be careful. You're going to hurt yourself. Anna, don't do that. You're being stupid. Yeah, but then every time that you do that, I'd like laugh and be like, that's so cool. Not like, oh. Oh, my God. I think I'd be a little bit nervous. I think I'd be a little nervous. I'd be nervous until you re-racked it. And then I'd be like, damn, girl, you're strong. Thank you. What can I say? Look at look at that. Ooh, that's actually looking pretty Bicep. good. I'm yeah, flexing right now, tell. everyone. I can tell. Thank you. I'm working. Oh, that that desk job has really got got your biceps working. Yeah, you know me on that mouse every day. <laughs> um. So then Samuel L. Jackson is in rehab, physical therapy, uh, being led by Robin Wright Penn, uh, where he acts like a creep and is like how long have you been with your husband i would Tell be like your husband i refuse to be this man's nurse especially when he goes about the accident when he's like oh you and david were in a car accident but 
And that's why he stopped playing football because he got hurt. And she's like, I didn't tell you my husband's name was David. I'd be like, okay, I'm, I refuse to work with this patient anymore. Thanks. Yeah, like pass it off to somebody else. Yeah, that's just creepy. I mean, if this was real life, which again, it's not. I definitely think that would be the situation where you call in your superior and be like, hey, I'm uncomfortable. Can somebody else do this? Yeah, or like... This guy's being a creep. In in this one situation, I assume there are, like, other nurses or, like, male nurses that he won't be as creepy towards. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Give him to hit the, one of those people. Amen. Um, also, I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that Bruce Willis and Robin Wright, they've grown apart in their marriage. Yeah, it's kind of sad. I mean... We don't really get a clear sense of why they've grown apart. We just hear that they did. I think it's because they're both considering getting rubber wedding bands. I think somebody introduced the rubber wedding bands and the other one took it really hard. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, honey, I want to sit you down and talk. Oh, no, you don't want to become swingers, do you? No. Worse. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I searched your browser history. I see that you've been been on the rubber wedding band website. We need to talk. The Rubber Wedding Band and Artificial Christmas Tree website. Yep, that's the one. <laughs> Balsam Hill. Um, David, which is Bruce Willis's character, gets a call from his son's school that his son's been hurt. So he goes down to the school to pick him up. And when he's there, he's talking to the nurse. And she's like, you don't remember the fact that you almost fucking drowned in the pool a while ago, I'd be right? like, yeah, I probably blocked it out because of trauma. Thanks. Yeah, you were dead for like five minutes and then they revived you. Anyway, why do you hate water? Trauma. <laughs> trauma. Uh, I'm scarred. So, yes, Bruce Willis's character had been dead as a child for five minutes in the water. And that's why he's afraid of water. Um and also, he is not, he is breakable underwater. Well, because it doesn't affect his bones. Like, he can't be crushed under the pressure of the water, but he can drown. Yes. From breathing it in. He's not a fish. He's not a merman, unfortunately. Not yet. Maybe, maybe that's the twist. We'll find out. Unbreakable 4. Aquaman 2. Too aqua, too f- <laughs> unbreakable. <laughs> Um, so then Bruce Willis talks to, um, Elijah Samuel Jackson and he's like, he can't get hurt. I, I, I can't get hurt, but my kryptonite, it's water. That's what they figure out. The kryptonite is water. He can drown mm-hmm. probably cause he has thick ass bones. That, that'll probably sink him straight to the bottom in two seconds. All that calcium. Yeah. It'll be like metal Mario and mm-hmm. smash bros. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You know, um, they say fat floats. He's just got to bulk up a little, and then maybe it'll even out. Yeah, you know, looking at late 40s, Bruce Willis. He's still pretty cut. He is, but out in that bench press scene, there's a little bit of a gut there. There was a, a, a dad bod. I think it, it's a much more uh, attainable body image. Yes, a very attainable body image. It's a healthy uh, body image for us to be looking at. Absolutely. He looks very healthy. Um, and I know that sounded sarcastic, but I was being serious. He does look very <laughs> healthy. He looks like a completely normal person. Yep. Um, so he and his Bruce Willis and Robin Wright, they're like, you know what? Let's try. Let's try again. Let's go on another date. Pretend it's Which like is pretty cute. Again. It is cute. Um, and this comes after she's like, if you were with anyone, I don't care. I want to know, but... I don't care. It won't bother me. And he's like, no. And she cries. I'm like, obviously, it would have bothered you then. Yeah. Don't lie to yourself. Woman, that's a trap. I would have just said, I want to know. I would not have said, it's going to not bother me. Because it absolutely would have bothered me. I have no idea how it, would, how it wouldn't bother someone. If it didn't bother you, that would mean you're completely done with the relationship. Which is okay, too. But you've got to be able to recognize that for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And then Bruce Willis, he goes and he is he, he goes to the train yard and he has a breakdown and he remembers the the car crash uh, that he and Robin Wright were in. 
He's college fine. Students. She's broken her legs like the newborn baby from earlier in the movie. Gasp, gasp, um, gasp. He was like ejected from the car too. Yeah. If he was anybody else, he'd be dead. Absolutely. He he ends up ripping the car door off to save her. He doesn't realize that he had done that. Uh, Again, this could have been ruled out just by his uh, panicked strength in a like you know like mom strength. Like mom strength with the kid under the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, tragedy. What am I trying to say? Like emergency what? strength. Adrenaline. Yes. I'm just, just start calling think... it my emergency strength now, not yes. adrenaline. No, I don't get strong when I have adrenaline. I just run. <laughs> uh, so then they're in the kitchen. He, Robin Wright, and the son. And guess what oh. the son has? The son's, the son's got a, a nail fucking biter. gun. A nail biter. And then they're like, you don't know where the bullets are. And he's like, inside your trophy. And they're like, oh, fuck, he's good. And <laughs> <laughs> they're like sweating. And I'm sweating even though I know what happened. The scene is full of tension, Dan. I don't understand how you can think it's bad. It's got me on the edge of my seat. My nails consider them bitten. I don't think this scene is bad. I think this scene is good. Mm-hmm. I think the movie's bad, but I think the scene's good. Um, so the the kid is like, "Look, no, you're you're invincible. You're a superhero. If you shoot me, if I shoot you, you'll be fine." And the guy's like, "Bruce was like, that's no, don't Literally shoot me. Don't. We're not trying that today." Uh, eventually, he does the the oldest parent trick in the book and starts to count to three. Yeah, literally. Um, which breaks the sun, and the sun puts the gun down. Well, what's worse, your dad bleeding out because you shot him or being grounded? Obviously. I don't know, probably being, being grounded. grounded. Um, I was thinking about that, though. I was like, how do you even punish your kid if they did that? Like, what, uh, how, how? Like, you, they know where the gun is. First of all, you have to lock that shit up. Find a new hiding spot for the bullets so that he can't find them again. And do you ground them? That doesn't feel harsh enough. And yet, like, he was trying to prove. I don't know. What do you think, Dan? Well, I was thinking, because, like, if your kid swears, you you can wash their mouth out with soap. Yes. I was thinking, do I wash his hand out with bullets? D that one not work. rub them on there. <laughs> Some loose gunpowder. You know, not being a parent, I think the best way to punish this kid is to just... Make him sleep outside for a week. I think it might be therapy. Mm, that's not punishment. No, but I think it's necessary. It's definitely necessary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I want this kid to be sleeping but outside if in the Philadelphia rain. Oh my god. If this kid went to therapy, though, he'd be like, my dad's a superhero, and they'd be like, that's it. Let's Let's get him in the old... I don't know. They don't have these anymore, but like, get the him the old... Room. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get him the old one two medicine, you know? Um the you wording it like that reminded me of what this movie reminds me the most of, and it's Santa Claus two. Like the Santa Claus yes. two? How With Tim Allen. So there's yes. a scene where his son he's like having a mental breakdown. He's like, do you know how hard it is to have a dad who's Santa Claus? All the kids in school are like, oh, my dad's a firefighter. M my dad's an accountant. I can't tell them my dad's Santa Claus. Yeah, exactly. That's the vibes I was getting from this kid the whole time. And I was like, this is, has the emotional depth of the Santa Claus to the that's a Mrs. Very, Claus. That's a very in-depth movie, okay? Both oh, of them. <laughs> yeah. Tim Allen's best work, truly. Don't That's, tell him I said that. That is really putting down the pure Michigan ads. Don't tell him I said that. <laughs> um, so the next day, Bruce Willis, it's raining, um, and he goes to Penn Station in Pennsylvania, not New York. Penn Station in New York. It's terrible what they did to it. Awful. They knocked down the original Penn Station in the 50s to build Madison Square Garden. Oh um, my god, Dan, so you're now ancient. So you, now you emerge from New York like rats instead of yes. from the grand terminal no. that was Penn Station, Pennsylvania Station. I've been to New York, but I never rode on the subway or anything. We just Penn Station's not. where you get like the commuter trains, mostly. Ah, uh, got it. Not the, not the subway stops. Um, and as he walks through Penn Station, he bumps into people and he sees 
Uh, all of their wrongdoings. This as he is does my so. favorite part. Uh, he bumps into one woman who listens to Woman in Red because she is Woman in Red. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. He bumps mm-hmm. into... And she stole something. Yeah, she stole some diamonds. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he bumps into... A, a, a rapist. A rapist. A date rapist. Yeah. Uh, still bad. It's bad. It's just a rapist. Just a rapist, Dan. Yeah. No need to qualify. That uh, that reminds me. There's a guy who did who did a, a stand up set where he's like, "Why do we why do we qualify date rape? Still just rape. Mm-hmm. No no need for the qualifier." Mm-hmm. Um, and then he he bumps into a maintenance man, uh, and he gets a vision of him breaking into somebody's house, saying, mm-hmm. "I like your house. Let me in." Coming in, creepy, killing the dad, and then tying up. The rest of the people in the home. Can you imagine having that superpower and seeing that? I'd be scared. I'd be like, I don't know what to do. I'm not going over there. I'm scared. Yeah, it is scary. Um, and there he realizes that he needs to go do something. So he, he follows the maintenance guy uh, as he leaves from work. And he goes to a nice house in a nice neighborhood. And he's like, that doesn't make sense. You're a maintenance guy. You can't afford this house. Um it's and a beautiful home, truly. He, he sneaks in the back and he sees the dead uh, husband still lying there in the, the back on the stairs. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he goes upstairs and he unties two sisters who were tied up in the bathroom. And can you imagine being those sisters tied up and another strange guy in this weird ass poncho like, shows up? For the love of God, can somebody like the police show yeah. up? Can can someone normal? Can I, yeah, can somebody not in really ominous looking clothing show up? Can the FBI show up? Someone, please. Um, <laughs> and he goes into another room and he finds the mother there and he goes to untie her. Um, well, actually, he goes and he looks out the window. Because that's what you should always do. Instead of untying the person, you should go and look out the window. Uh, as he goes to look out the window, uh-oh, orange jumpsuit guy shows up and pushes him out. Scary. And pushes him right into a pool. Now, okay, Dan, mm-hmm. put yourself in Mr. Willis's shoes for a moment. Okay. If you were to fall out of a window and onto a pool, like, a uh, cover like that. Yes. Do you think you would die or do you think you'd be able to just, like, stand up and get out? I think I wouldn't spend eight minutes looking around as the pool cover slowly loses its sandbags holding it Yeah, no, me either. I I think I would definitely... Land and crawl towards the edge. Mm -hmm. That way I wouldn't get sucked into the middle of the tarp. But also, the tarp wouldn't, like, wrap around you like that. Thank you. You would just be a weight on top of it, and they would be, like, flapping up in the water... Like I've been on, like I, I've been on a tarp in a pool before. You could just that sounds dangerous, Dan. It, it's a it's a pool in a house. It's not that deep. He could like doggy paddle to the side or like you could stand up, stand right? up in it. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to discuss with you because I suggested that to Gage, and he's like, "No, it wraps around you. How would you get out?" And I was like, "I don't know." He's, it's not a I wave pushing the tarp on him. It's his body weight just weighing it down. Um, normally, you know how, how I'm like, if it, I don't care if movies make sense, I assume they make sense in the movie's logic. Mm-hmm. I also don't care that the tarp thing doesn't make sense. That's fair. Um, I do it's care that it's It's for dramatic stupid. effect, because he's scared of water. Yeah. Um, so he, he gets out of the pool, uh, because the two sisters use a pole, Reach down and grab it, and I thought, Mr. Glass is here? His cane is here? He's saving He's in a him? wheelchair. No. He's not going to be able to reach over the edge of the pool, even with his cane. That's true. But the, the two sisters, they save him. And then Bruce Willis, he heads back upstairs, puts the jumpsuit guy in a rear naked choke, kills him, but he does not save the mother in time. The mother has died. I don't think I'd be able to kill somebody like that. I know that that's, like, what he has to do to protect himself but it's too scary thank you to quote kylo ren i know what i have i know what i have to do but i don't know if i have the strength to do it amen 
That's my boy. I saw a really cute dog on a rescue website named Kylo, and I'm devastated that I can't adopt him. He's a pug terrier mix. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. I saw a very cute cat on the Pet Finder name's Twitter account named Dumpster Dan. Not Dumpster Dan. My God. That's too. It looked like Poppy a bat. Needs, Poppy needs a brother. If we got another cat, it'd be another girl cat. Yeah, you think so? Would yeah. Poppy fight a boy? No, she'd be terrified. She'd hide Aww. the whole time. Aww, She's terrified Pop. of everything. Poor Pop. Um, sometimes Anna will put her on a harness and take her out to the patio. Cute. Right outside our building. Um, as we were coming in today, another person who lives in our building walked past us uh, <laughs> right as we got inside. Like, we were in our hallway, so there was no mm-hmm. worry about her, like, getting out or anything. But when she saw the other person, she, like, jumped out of Anna's arms and sprinted back towards our apartment door. And then was, like, yelping and scratching at the doorknob trying to get in. She's so scared of everything. We took her to the vet, and the vet's like, she has really sweaty paws because she's nervous all the time. (laughs) That's such a mood. She has sweaty beans, Dan. She does. Oh, she got sweaty beans. (laughs) <laughs> that's so cute Ugh. um anyway speaking of sweaty beans bruce willis goes home hangs up his cape sorry hangs up, hangs his, up sweaty his poncho beans. his sweaty bean poncho uh and then just as he carried his wife from the wreckage of the car he carries her up to bed mm-hmm. uh she wakes Very up and romantic she wakes up and says what's wrong he said i had a bad dream um it's I, almost but... It's almost as romantic as when I carry Anna from the couch to the bed, and when I get to the bed, I literally throw her. Gage never carries me anywhere. <laughs> he carries my burdens everywhere, though. Uh, the next morning, they're having breakfast. Bruce Willis is doing my favorite thing in the world and reading the morning paper. Um, I'm 97 years old. That's okay. I'm not joking when I say I love reading. In all through middle school and high you. school, I would read the paper while eating breakfast. I'm not judging you, but I'm also looking at pictures of Miss Poppy on, on Instagram. Instagram. Right yeah. yeah, she's a cute cat. She is very cute, Dan. You can tell that we've gone long in the tooth in our podcast recording when Anna gets distracted by other Dan, things. Dan, <laughs> you know I'm always distracted. <laughs> it's the nature of me. You were talking about Poppy. I just wanted to look at her face for just like two seconds. That's fair. I'm looking at her right now. Oh, couldn't be me. I'm not so spoiled and lucky. I, I hope it wouldn't be you. Then I'd be like, how the hell did you get um, in my apartment? I snuck in. Poppy, let me in. <laughs> um, so Bruce Willis' son, he sees the, the newspaper headline. Um, oh, this part's cute, too. Dan, Dan, how do you not like this movie? And Bruce Willis, he smiles and nods at his son. Because his son looks like he's fucking traumatized. He doesn't look traumatized. He yes, looks he like does. any other boy during the year 2000 with his long hair and a lot of tears. Were children crying all that much? Munch? I Dan? know what I said. I mean, I cried a lot, but I was also five, so. Yeah, I was three. Today, my grandma called me and she goes, Oh, Anna, you're going to have to come visit our new apartment. We have two bedrooms. You can sleep over, but don't cry. Because when I was little, I <laughs> cried all the time. I was like, Grandma, why'd you call me just to roast me? Uh, so then Bruce Willis, he goes to Samuel L. Jackson's gallery where he's having a huge art show or something. Mm-hmm. Um, he's showing comes... all his comic book pictures. He is like a dork. And then... Yep. He he talks to Samuel L. Jackson's mom, um, and, and they talk about how, how he was as a kid. Did Apparently, you notice... Samuel L. Jackson keeps good contact with his mother, which is good. Well, I I mean, also I, it seems like it was only them. If there was a dad, he probably like it seems like he wasn't as present in Samuel Jackson's life. Like maybe he worked all the time or something and it was just him. The mom was like his primary caretaker or something. That's what it seems like to me. Also, uh, I realized I skipped the scene where Samuel Jackson is just catatonic in the back of a comic book store. Oh my and, God. And the cashier's like, you better not be jacking off to the Japanese comics. 
Uh, and then he's like, I'm sorry, man. You, I didn't know you were in a wheelchair. And then Samuel Jackson destroys the place and then finds one comic that he wants. And he goes, wait, how much is how this? Much is After this? he's wrecked the place. <laughs> there is a early Peanuts comic where it's Charlie Brown is in the five and dime. And he's mm-hmm. looking at the comic book rack. And he's like, uh, all the good comics are at the top. So he's literally like climbing up oh, to no. the top of the comic stand. And he's like throwing all the other comics that are below him onto the ground. Charlie. And he pulls down the comic rack and he gets it and he brings it up and he pays for it. And he's like, gee, I wonder why the cashier was so mad. Oh my God. <laughs> That's cute though. Um, and then they talk and Bruce Willis, Samuel Jackson, they, they discuss what happened. Um, Samuel Jackson is proud of what Bruce Willis has done. And then they shake hands, and Bruce Willis sees all the bad things Samuel L. Jackson has done. He has, like, literally a bomb on his desk. Yeah. Just out in the open for anybody to see. Sir, I'm not saying you should be doing that kind of stuff, but don't you think if you were, you would hide it? Right. I'm I'm glad that you clarified that you're not saying that you should be having bombs and bombing things. I don't I don't condone that. I just for the sake of the movie. I really think people would have been confused. Heard you talk about that. You're like, Anna wants me to have a bomb. I most certainly do not. The only (laughs) bomb I condone is bath bombs. And even then, it's kind of risky. I don't even if condone get, those. If it, it might get a little slippery in the tub, you know, and you got to watch out. Make sure the glitter is biodegradable. You know what I'm saying? I'm picking up what you're putting down. Mm-hmm. It's bath bombs. Do you know what Samuel L. Jackson was putting down? Real bombs. <laughs> 300 people. Yeah, for real. I, I can't even imagine. Like, the first time I saw this, when that was revealed that he was behind all of the, like, horrible domestic terrorist attacks they were calling them yeah that killed all these people i was shook because i can't imagine i mean obviously he's supposed to be like a comic book level villain or at least that's what he thinks he is because he's doing all this stuff i can't imagine the headspace you have to be in to do something like that once let alone three times you know what i mean he was looking for his hero because the thing with the the twist Twimst? The 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 betwixt of the film is the that twitches of the film. The twitches too. How long can we put off me saying the twist? Say um, the twist. The M Night Shyamalan twist. Yeah, the twist is that Samuel L. Jackson has been masterminding all of these large events. Uh, a plane crash or a plane explosion. It doesn't crash. It never takes off. A building fire and the train crash. I'm going to say this real quick before you finish this sentence. In the plane scene and the train scene, how does nobody suspect him? How is he not getting arrested? He's the only one not reacting to these tragedies. He was the last one seen. I guess maybe the conductor died. But in the plane, he's sitting there. Everybody runs to to the window. If you watch that footage, you're like, why is that man in a purple suit just sitting there? Like... I would have been, not that I would ever do something like this, but you'd think he'd pretend, you know? Thank you for clarifying that as well. I'm just trying to not go to jail, Dan. I just got to cover my butt, you know? <laughs> um, yeah, so Samuel L. Jackson has been behind all these terrible things, looking for the other version of him. Um, and he realizes that if Bruce Willis is the hero, then he is the villain. And he's like, I should have, I should have known it all along. The children, they called me Mr. Glass. (laughs) And then freeze frame. Bruce Willis called cops. Yes, he did. Samuel L. Jackson is in jail. He's in a mental institution for the criminally insane. Thank you very much. Sorry, freeze frame, freeze frame, blah, blah, blah. That's unbreakable. Unbreakable. I like it, Dan. I'm happy that you do. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Tell me about it. Like, what? I know you said it was boring, but like, go off. Okay, now's the time. That's my main issue with it. I wasn't invested in anything that was happening at all. 
Not even like the my favorite scenes, like I shared the gun scene. Well, like on the... on an individual scene level, I thought that was a good. What about scene. like those other when... resurrected scene? When he bumps into people and like their jackets get like really bright and you can see who he's thinking about and it matches the jacket like in the scene of what terrible thing they did. I think that scene is so cool. I didn't. In the station, you didn't like that one? I liked Samuel L. Jackson falling down. I thought that was goofy. Well, you're entitled to your wrong opinion. That's fine. Oh, I have to sit here in my wrongness and be wrong about it? Yeah, you do. Okay, I'm trying to uh, I'm, let me. I'm trying to think of another thing that stood out as a reason to dislike it, and I don't care about internal logic in movies. Mm-hmm. Everything internally in a movie makes sense, even if it doesn't. It does because that's the benefit of the doubt that I will give to every movie. Mm-hmm. Um, so I the, the like him almost drowning because the tarp wraps around him or something. Mm-hmm. Sure. I believe it. Why not? Yeah. Um, but I just... Why do I care about Bruce Willis's character? I have no reason to care about him. Why do you care about any character, you know? Because I can relate to them. They're empathetic. They're interesting. I he's, think he's interesting. I don't think he's interesting. Well... I think that character could be interesting. I don't think that the way it is played... I think Bruce Willis's weird, aloof, detached understatement that he's doing for most of the movie doesn't work. Okay. Like, I get that it's supposed to be like a grounded superhero thing, but then you have mm-hmm. the a maniacal comic book villain in Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah. That the two clash, but not in a superhero supervillain clash, in a polka dots and stripes clashing sort of way. I think it's supposed to be the idea of, like, the hero in this movie is so painfully normal, whereas he, like, so he's, like, dropped into this life, whereas the only superhero, like, most other superheroes don't get forced into that. They just, like, either choose to start being a hero or something, and, like, he kind of does, but if it wasn't for Samuel L. Jackson saying something, he never would have done any of this stuff. Mm -hmm. He never would have even thought about it. It just was, like... I'm the only survivor. What a coincidence. I am so lucky. And I think, like, yeah, Samuel Jackson's character is over the top, but I think that's the point. That, oh, like, I, yeah, I yeah. get that that's the point of his character. Yeah. Because he's, I mean, he's been growing up since he was, the only thing that he had that he connected to was comic books. So, of course, yeah. he, he would model himself after that. And, and I guess. Sure, he would model himself after the villain instead of the hero because he's a weird ass kid. Well, I um, wonder if at first he did think that he'd maybe be like the hero, and then after all this happened with um, Bruce Willis, he realized he was the villain and not the hero. Yeah, I, that's what I got from the ending. That that's yeah. how I read his reaction. Mm-hmm. But did he think he was the hero when he was committing? Either I think he thought he was the hero or he thought he was looking for the hero. So, like, he's like, there's got to be a hero out there. Uh And instead of finding a better way to do it by not, you know, literally ruining people's lives and killing people, he decided to go down this dark path. And I think he thought that it was a good thing he was doing at first because he's like, I got to find somebody who's just like me. I can make it so that this comic book lifestyle is real. And then looking back, he's like, oh, crap, I did all of this. Mm -hmm. And I like the outcome, but I am not doing it for the right reason. Like, I'm not doing the right thing. Yeah. And, you know, your explanations of things and your reasoning, those make sense and those sound interesting. Thank you, Dan. But I didn't see. Yeah, but I didn't see those in the movie. Okay. Like, I think the way that you explained it is far more interesting than what I got from the movie. This is the best compliment I've ever received. Can you say that one more time? The way that you described Unbreakable? Mm -hmm, mm Mm-hmm. Much more entertaining, much more interesting. I'm way more into it than the actual movie Unbreakable. Thank you! Oh, my goodness. Wow. What a high compliment. Such high praise from Dan O'Keefe on this fine Monday evening. You're welcome. I I get that it's supposed to be a deconstruction of the superhero mythos and mystique. Mm-hmm. It doesn't go hard enough into that. 
I think it's um I know that technically Bruce Willis is the main character and uh Samuel L. Jackson isn't the main character until the third movie, but I think in this movie in some ways he still is the main character and I think it's more so about He's the driving tra- force. Yeah, it's more so about his tragic upbringing than it is about Bruce Willis. I think it's more so like he had this and terrible again, life. I would way more want to watch his tragic upbringing than this movie because this movie is not about his tragic upbringing. This movie is about him and Bruce Willis having a bad friendship. I mean, we'll get into it more with Glass if I remember correctly. I don't think a ton, but like enough. Uh huh. But it'll help. It's been a while, so everything kind of blurs together. But yeah. Anyway, uh, trivia about yes, Unbreakable. Um, there are a bunch of deleted scenes that I thought were interesting. Mm. Um, there was one scene um, where after at the memorial service, Bruce Willis goes to talk to the priest after the fact. And he's like, how did I survive the train when my watch looked like it got smashed by a hammer, like completely pulverized? Mm-hmm. And the priest reacts by <laughs> angrily going like, my nephew was on that train. And now he's questioning God. Yikes. Uh, which is a, a grim, which might have worked better had they kept it in the movie. Um, it, it was taken out because of technical reasons. Shyamalan didn't like the cinematography of the scene. Mm. No, like pacing or story reasons. He just didn't yeah. like how it was shot. Um, there was a scene where after he bench pressed with his son... He was going to go to the football stadium and bench press. And he got up mm-hmm. to 500 pounds, but it was cut because it was redundant. Yeah, that is too much. I uh, guess like maybe in a montage, but that's too much otherwise. Yeah, we get the gist. Yeah. And then there was a scene where <laughs> it was Samuel L. Jackson as a child on a carnival ride. Mm-hmm. And uh, he falls off. Where he gets injured on it. Um, oh. which it says that it was recycled for glass. So, okay. So I'm we'll not see go it any probably. further into it. Uh, and then a lunch date between Samuel L. Jackson and Robin Wright. Hmm. Um, that seems like it's a violation of something. Uh, yeah, this movie only takes place at night. That's the violation. Oh no, that is simply not true. That's true. It takes place in the morning and at night. Nothing takes place in the afternoon. That's not true either. He picks up his son after in the afternoon when he's playing football and he goes, I'm going to go work out with my dad. Like, that's the coolest thing on earth. That could be the evening. I think it's like four o'clock. Second question for you after I didn't have a. Well, the first one was about park. The second question for you. Don't ask me about what times I think the evening and afternoon are. Well, it's related. What are what are the time frames for meals? Breakfast is any time before 11. Okay. Lunch is 11 to... Oh, I'd say 2. Mm-hmm. And then 3 to 8. 3, uh, like any time between 3 and 5 is like an early dinner. Uh-huh. Um, 5, 6, 7 is like a regular time for dinner. Seven to eight is a late dinner. Yes. Okay. I basically agree with you. Thank you. Um, the, I'm perfect. I have been getting argued with because I say that breakfast is from six to nine. Brunch is nine to 11. Oh, yeah. I and didn't include brunch. Lunch is 11 to two and then afternoon snack and then Yeah, I'd dinner. agree with you 100% on those okay. time frames. Thank you. Thank you're you. I have th- you're the first one to agree with me on that. No, I agree with you. <laughs> Everyone's like, brunch starts at 9 and ends at 11? Brunch uh, ends at 2 p.m. And I'm like, no, that's no, after lunch. No, that's lunch. lunch. That's, that's after just, lunch. Even. Yeah. That's uh-huh. like a snacky time. I only take my lunch at 2 if I'm, like, really having a busy day. Yeah. We're elderly. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, God, we are. <laughs> so this movie came out the same year as X-Men. Uh, it came out a couple of months after X-Men. Mm. Uh, and then before Spider-Man. So it is the forgotten movie that kicked the superhero genre into what it first became, or I guess in its second wave, 
before probably the just because it's not like based on a real superhero. It's just based off of the idea of how powerful comic books and the interest in those sorts of things can be. You know, mm-hmm. I think if it was based off of a real character, people would have been more drawn to it. But like, instead, it's like here's a superhero we just invented. He technically doesn't really have a name yet. Enjoy. His name is David. Bruce Willis. <laughs> yep. Uh, and that's really all the trivia that I have about the movie. Um, okay. Th- there is more trivia that I can't really talk about because I don't want to re- reveal myself to spoilers. Yeah, we'll um, we'll like. I think after Glass is done, we'll go over all of the things from all three of the movies more since they do intertwine so much. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I just. I didn't think that this was a good movie. I don't I don't well, know what else to say about it. I thought it was uninteresting. I'll and... tell you right now. I preferred Split. Okay. And I know that there's going to be a lot of talk about with Split because when it came out it was met with a lot of criticism from the mental health community. And I think that'll be really interesting for us to discuss next week. Yeah, I I was surprised when you said it makes sense from the mental health community because when I when it came out, I remember it getting like rave reviews. Mm-hmm. It got really good reviews from a lot of people, but a lot of people also said it was a poor representation of people with um, a multiple personality disorder. I think it is. Yeah, I don't. I know it's not. I don't. There's one that it's not, and one that it is. I can't remember. There's borderline personality disorder, which it's not, and multiple. That's different entirely. Yeah. Um, multiple, because I think before it was like, no, it's disassociative identity disorder is what it is called. Multiple personality is the old one. Disassociative. Yes. Okay. I got it. I got there. Thank you, Psych 101. <laughs> uh, anyway, tune in next week to hear us mess up these terms 8,000 times. <laughs> hear me crack open a psychology textbook that I had to rent from a student library or a bookstore. What's that one? Sweeney's? Sweeney's. It's closed. Yeah. It's gone. <gasps> Permanently? Yeah. Sweeney. Um, I never got my books from the bookmark. I always went to Sweeney's. Your first mistake was getting the books. Daniel! What? Did you ever read them? Because my mom is listening to this podcast, I'll say yes. <laughs> Would this movie be better, worse, or the same with Jonathan Taylor Thomas as the son? <laughs> better <laughs> but he would have had to have more lines like the gun scene i think would have been too silly with him uh-huh because i i think he's all of the movies that jonathan taylor thomas was in were always goofy and this is not really a goofy movie no but... this is an extremely goofy movie <laughs> stop <laughs> oh we have to cover those at some point yeah. um but like you know what I mean, like I think he's a little too goofy, but at the same time he's just so good at playing kids, or was so good at playing kids. Now he's good at walking his dogs. Um, so you know, I think, <laughs> I think I would have liked to see it. Yeah, but he um, would have been too old by this point. He would have been like eighteen, nineteen, twenty. I think he can play young. True. Would it be better, or worse, or the same, Jimmy Stewart? Who would he play, Glass? I should have known. The kids on the playground, see, they 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 they, they, they called me Mr. Glass. Mr. Glass. It would have been worse. There's no nowhere for Jimmy Stewart in this movie. Samuel Jackson's just too good at his craft. Yes. That's all there is to it. He's always good. That is true. He's very good. Even when he's phoning it in, which it seems like he's doing in a lot of movies. I he's mean, still good. The face he has in this movie really screams, I don't want to be here yeah, for but, a lot of it. And I can't tell. Which is so surprising because it face. seems like he would, he loved, like in the interviews and stuff, it seems like he loved doing this. Yeah, maybe he just was like, they told him to just use his resting face because mm-hmm. I think he's got RBF. I've heard that he's very kind, mm-hmm. good person. I think Samuel L. Jackson is RBF. <laughs> That's resting bitch face for I know, people who I'm, don't I, know. A, a, a fellow fellow person afflicted with it. You do not have RBF. I, you don't. Maybe I just know you too much. Too well. I have resting sad face. Do you want to see? Yes. Oh, who, who died? Everybody, that literally people <laughs> ask me all the time. They're like, why are you crying? I'm like, I literally haven't cried. 
I have allergies and my eyes are watering and this is just my face. Literally, uh, I'm fine. Do you have anything else about Unbreakable? No. Thank Again, God. I love that the color scheme is mostly green for this movie because for the next movie, it's yellow. Blech. Yeah. You know what else has a mostly green color scheme? Hmm. The Matrix. Listen to those episodes. Stop. No. <laughs> Uh, Dan, I'm telling you, I think you're going to like Split better. And it has Gage's celebrity crush, Anya Taylor-Joy, in it. But when ooh. she was little, he thinks she's so pretty. She There's, is. I'm not discrediting is, him. When we were we were in L.A. a couple weeks ago. Yes. And when we were driving around, uh, there is a giant multi-story billboard of for your consideration for the Queen's Gambit of Anya Taylor-Joy. Ooh. But it is from... When she's like 14 in the show and she has the worst haircut in the world. Oh, God. And I'm like, that is the haircut that I aspire to have one day. That is that is the best looking thing I've ever seen. What do you give this movie on a scale of one to five, 60 broken bones? I'm going to give it three broken 60 bones. (laughs) Uh, Three, three, three bones, Dan. Three bones. Three bones. Um. I like it, but it's not my favorite in the series. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's a really solid entrance into the series. But, I mean, they took such a long break after it came out to really split that I think it's kind of, like, weird. But I don't uh-huh. know. We'll see. I, I just, I like it. But, yeah, it's not my favorite. Okay. I, I am bones. giving it one and a half. One and a half bones. One and a half bones. Small, like one and a half bones. broken bones. Skinny, one and a half small. Ear bones. Breakable. What are they? What are those bones in your ear called? Uh, stirrup, anvil, and the hammer. Yeah, I think that's it. So I don't think the hammer is right, but I think the stirrup and the anvil are right. So I'm giving it a stirrup and half an anvil. Oh God. Uh, two, two stirrups. Hopefully next week will be better. <laughs> I think you'll like split better. Like I said, it's going to be, we're going to have a cerebral chat next week about the uh, controversies in the mental health community. It'll be no fun. one, no one better to discuss controversies in the mental health community than two people with communications degrees. What can I say? I am well versed. <laughs> you know, I took. As one person who took Psych 101 twice and another person who took Psych 101 twice, I think we're both pretty equipped to say that we are the right people for this job. I will say, my therapist, she says, you know, you're good at explaining things. Bill, my therapist, says that I have a very colorful imagination, which is one of the (laughs) qualities of having obsessive compulsive disorder so good start um (laughs) if you like the show and you want to support our therapy sessions you can do so on patreon.com slash in conclusion wait dan don't we have something to hype yes we do not only do we have a patreon we have a store (gasps) what (gasps) we have merch you can get shirts and other stuff stickers a mug i think you know fans hi um if there's a phrase that we say or something that you would like to see on a shirt maybe let us know yeah that could be fun look we we'll do anything if you want to buy it we'll make it yeah so within reason that's what she says do anything that's my my line nothing Um, too crazy if you want to buy a shirt, a sticker, a mug, or anything else that we end up putting up, you can do so at shop.wearecreativeland.com. Once again, that is shop.wearecreativeland.com. I'll put the links on the Facebook and the Instagram as and well. I will put it on the Twitter. Perfect. We have a very unified social media presence. Perfect. <laughs> Uh, if you want to find us on social media, you can do so on Facebook and Twitter at and in conclusion on Instagram at in conclusion podcast. If you want to find me, I'm on Twitter at Dan O'Keefe 86 or on my website, Dan dash O'Keefe.com. And where can they find you? You can find me on Instagram at Autobots roll out or you can wait. What? 
I messed up. You can find me on Instagram at <laughs> AutoMissPrime818, or you can find me on Twitter at Autobots Rollout, capital O for auto, capital B for bots, capital R for roll, and the O and roll, and the O and out are zeros. Woo! That was rough. You know we what, made it. Do you know what messing up your weekly social media tag is a sign of? I, a time, time to go to bed? Obsessive compulsive disorder. Daniel! <laughs> Get lost. We will be back next week talking about Split. In the meantime, you could also buy flip flops with my face on them at shop.wearecreativeland.com. Um, also, oh, in the damn. meantime, everybody stay safe, have fun, and get vaccinated. Bye bye. Bye. loves romance and I'm like ugh that's why we wouldn't get along